Today we'll be doing an unboxing and long-term review of the Sea to Summit Evolite XT insulated sleeping mat. So how can it be a long-term review if we're only just unboxing it? Stay tuned to find out. So before we get into this review, I'll just mention that we're going to be doing a lot more gear reviews like this one in the coming months. And mostly from a bikepacking or bike touring perspective. So if that's something that interests you, hit that subscribe button. The Sea to Summit Evalite XT Insulated, other than being a bit of a mouthful to say, is also marketed as a three season mat that aims to balance the comfort of a big thick air mat whilst also being relatively lightweight as one would expect from something that is either light. Now the mat's available in five sizes, which of course have varying weights that I'll put on the screen right now. So I'll be reviewing the large rectangular mat, which is the biggest and the heaviest of the available models at 690 grams without the included stuff sack at 57 grams, giving a total packed weight of 747 grams. Now, while 750 grams isn't exactly backbreaking, it's still pretty portly compared to some other ultralight models out there. Okay, so let's get into the unboxing. Now, on the box here, we've got a list of some of the insulation technologies utilized in the construction of this mat, as well as the thickness, the R value, and a sticker indicating which size mat this is, along with the weight and the dimensions. If we roll it over, we've got a bit of general information and and then some info on the insulation. Now this mat uses two technologies for its insulation. Basically one of them is an internal metallized coating that reflects heat, and the other is a sort of synthetic insulation that kind of mimics down in the way that it lofts up and traps heat. Now I'm not gonna get into the details here, but basically it results in an R value of 3.2. Moving on, we've got a bit of spiel and then some instructions on how to use the included pump sack. So let's open it up. So you're actually meant to open the orange end first, so don't do what I did. And that contains the mat itself. The gray colored end contains the pump sack for inflating the mat. Now getting into the mat itself, you can see it's neatly rolled up and sealed with a bit of plastic. Good luck getting it to look this neat again. So we'll just leave this rolled up until we're ready to inflate it. And right here is the valve that you'll connect to the mat when you're ready to inflate it with the pump sack, which also has handy instructions printed on the side. Okay, now to pump it up. And as I'm unrolling it, I toss some stuff on the ground, which happens to be a leaflet and some repair patches should you get a puncture. There are also some attachment points for the pillow lock system, which are basically Velcro tabs that hold your pillow in place while you sleep. Now, I don't use them, so I can't really comment on them, but it is a pretty nice feature. So to inflate the mat, all we need to do is hook up the pump sack, and then we're gonna use what's called the Bernoulli effect. To do this, all you need to do is blow into the orange opening from a distance, which creates a vortex. Now this inflates it much quicker than if you were to put your mouth in there. Once you get the air in there, just pinch the end and force the air into the mat. Now this is gonna save your lungs, but it also stops the moisture from your breath getting into the mat and causing any mold or mildew. Now the mat does have an antimicrobial coating on the inside, which is gonna impede any growth, but it's still worth trying to avoid getting moisture in there. The large mat that I have here takes about five goes of the pump sack to inflate, after which you can add a bit extra air just by blowing straight into the valve with your mouth if you find you need a little extra. Now, once you're on the mat and you're ready to go to sleep, you might find that you've blown it up a little bit too firm. In this case, all you need to do is push the little button in the center of the valve, which will let some air out and allow you to fine tune the mat to get it just how you want it. When you're ready to deflate the mat, all you need to do is pull the entire valve assembly out and squeeze out the majority of the air. At this point, all you need to do is fold the mat to a third of its width and roll it towards the valve so that it squeezes out the remaining air as you go. And now it should fit neatly into the orange end of the pump sack and you can just stuff the pump section of the sack back into the gray end and pull the drawstring tight. Okay, so now that we've done the unboxing and we've seen how the mat works, let's get into the review. So I guess we'll start with what I like about it. Now, as you've seen, it's a big old mat. 
Now, I'm six foot three, as well as being a pretty active sleeper, and I just find most mats are way too narrow. Oftentimes, I'll have an arm hanging off or my knee will fall off the side, and it's just not ideal, especially in the cold weather. But not this one. There's plenty of space for someone of my size, even someone who happens to be a bit of a restless sleeper. Now it's also plenty thick, and despite being 90 kilograms and a side sleeper, I never touch the ground. Now secondly, and most importantly, this is without a doubt the comfiest sleeping pad I have ever used. The thickness, combined with the air spring design, just works. And the little bleed valve that lets you let a bit of air out, lets you get it to just the right level of plushness. It's just so comfy. Sea to Summit claim that the air spring design is superior to a traditional baffle design because it provides more consistent support, whereas in a traditional baffle design, the air can move about, and that's what causes you to fall off the side and whatnot. And from my experience, they're right. My last mat had a baffle design, and occasionally I would fall off the side, but I haven't had that issue with this mat. The insulation also works great. Now an R value of 3.2 might not be enough for some people, but it was more than enough for me, and it would be easy enough to supplement it with a foam mat underneath if you needed a bit of extra warmth. But in most conditions, I don't think this is necessary at all, so you'd probably only end up having to carry the extra foam for one season, as the three season rating would suggest. And finally, I'll just add that the pump sack is really well thought out and works fantastic. Now, unfortunately, we're at the part of the review where I tell you what I don't like about it. And the reason why this video is both an unboxing and a long-term review. The mat that I'm holding right now is actually a warranty replacement for the one that catastrophically failed after less than a month of use. So I'm gonna tell you the full story of my experience with this mat, which some of you might know from our tour videos. So I started our Australian tour with an Alpkit mat. Now, it was pretty cheap, but it worked pretty well. The only issue I had with it was that it had zero insulation whatsoever, and I'd sometimes struggle to stay warm on it. So during our Tassie tour, when we landed in Hobart, I decided it was finally time to take the plunge and pick up the Etherlite XT insulated. Tassie had been pretty chilly up to that point, and it was only getting colder, and I figured it was definitely time to upgrade. Now at first, it was a complete revelation. It was so much comfier than the Alpkit one, and I really felt the difference the insulation was making. Everything was fantastic, and I loved this new mat. Until one night, when we were riding the KKRT and we camped at Mergen, and I woke up on the floor. So I just figured I'd got a puncture. The campsite there is, it's a little bit grubby, and I figured there must have just been some debris on the ground that had popped it. So I found the puncture, and it just happened to be right in one of the little dimples where the air springs are. So I patched it and moved on. And then the next night, woke up on the floor again. So I figured there must have been two punctures, and I just missed the second one, which also happened to be in one of the air springs. So again, I patched it and moved on. And the next morning, I woke up on the floor again. And this continued until my mat looked like this. At one point, I had nearly 30 patches on it. I'd run out of the included patches long ago, and had had to resort to using inner tube patches to fix it. Which didn't really work. You can see here that they're all just kind of falling off, and yeah. So it was around this point that I saw a post on one of the bikepacking Facebook groups from someone else who was having the same problem, and was now on his fifth replacement. He said that every time it happened, Sea to Summit were more than happy to replace the mat, but he was getting pretty sick of the whole process. You know, having a functional mat and then it failing and having to sleep on the ground until they sent you a new one, which eventually fails, and then you have to sleep on the ground again until they send another new one. And it seems that this isn't an uncommon issue. I did find other reviews with people complaining of the same problem. So I contacted C to Summit and they were happy to replace it, no questions asked. But at this point, it was pretty obvious that there was some sort of manufacturing issue with this particular product. So I told C to Summit that I was aware of this issue and I was aware of other people having this problem. 
and I asked if they'd changed anything about the manufacturing process to fix this issue, and if they could guarantee that it wasn't going to happen to me again. And they responded by telling me that due to the nature of inflatable pads, they can't guarantee that I won't get a puncture again. Which isn't really what I was asking, and I kind of felt like I'd been fobbed off. So after that interaction, we kind of went back and forth for a bit to try and figure out how to get a warranty replacement sent out to me, which was kind of difficult seeing as we were on the move. So the person I was communicating with would ask me, where are you going to be in a week's time? And we will send you a new one to there. So I would tell them, and by the time they replied to me, a week had already been and gone and I was past there. So it was kind of disjointed and it was awkward and, and it just didn't work out. So I actually didn't end up getting my warranty replacement until we'd finished the tour and gotten a permanent address. So this leaves me in a really awkward place with how to wrap up this review. I truly love sleeping on this mat. It is so comfortable and when it worked, it was fantastic. Just the most comfortable mat I've ever slept on by far but I just can't recommend it for long-term use. If you're spending all day cycling, day after day after day, cycling hundreds of kilometers, thousands of kilometers, then good sleep is really important. And once this thing started failing, I didn't have good sleep for a very long time. Now, c to summit were more than happy to replace the mat, and I really can't fault them there. But even if they're on their A-game when it fails, and it will fail. It's still gonna take them like two weeks or more to get it to you. And that's two weeks of cycling all day and then not being able to get good sleep at the end of it. Not to mention the whole process of, of figuring out the logistics of where to get it sent to and where are you gonna be in two weeks time and all this stuff. Now, I think for occasional use or for weekend warriors, it would probably be fine. It would take a lot longer for it to fail for someone like that than it would for someone like me who's sleeping on it every single day. And then if it did fail, you wouldn't be reliant on it while you were waiting on a replacement. And I suspect this is why not everyone is reporting the issue. There's probably a lot of people that aren't using it enough for it to fail. And the people who it is failing for, it's probably not a big enough deal for them to have to put it online or whatever. So I think I'm just gonna call it there, guys. This has without a doubt been the most comfortable sleeping mat I have ever slept on, but I just can't recommend it because of its reliability. Good sleep is just far too important.